Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about uh, how to correct the cascading drop down. So basically, this was a question that came in the comment section. And what's happening is that we have these drop downs, right? So we have make and model. These are drop downs that I pull from a separate list. It's going to actually be this car models list. And we can come to an existing item, save it. But when we go to new and fill out the form, when we get to our cascading drop down, so this information, those are standard drop downs. We get to our cascading drop down, it's picking up the value of the previous form. And if you hit refresh and then try new, everything works as expected. But we don't want to have the end user have to click refresh. Another thing that you would notice uh, that we kind of run into when you're creating custom forms and interacting with the Power App form from within the SharePoint list, it seems like there's a lot of caching that's happening to where, like, if I come in and fill this out, let me check, select another one. So let me just do this Daewoo, uh, Laganza, and say this off. And then I go right back into click new. You notice how I'm getting batch numbers from the previous request. And if I go next, I, all my information, all the saved values from your previous request is being saved. And it, I'm actually, if I just next, 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 so I, like I just did, I start to duplicate that. So how do you resolve this? So there's a couple of things that we have to do. So the first thing, let's go ahead into our custom Power App screen and see how we can modify this. Because again, we drop in these default controls, these cascading drop downs and do all this fancy lookup with other lists. You no, know, these are two or three different lists into a single form, which is possible because it's all about setting the property uh, within the Power Apps. But we want all of these uh, customizations or you know different hooks that we put in here to operate as if they were out of the box or native controls within the form control in this scenario. Okay, so the key piece here when you're dealing with custom forms is the SharePoint integration. Now, uh, all of these, let, let me just talk about the SharePoint integration and why it's super duper important, especially with custom forms. Actually, it only applies with custom forms, so let me clarify that. In each one of these, um, so you have this app hook, right? And that has a lot of confirmation or hooks, so we, we call them uh, events that get fired. Even on the screen, uh, if you select the screen component, uh, if you hit the drop down, anything that starts with an on are events. So this is like on visible, like right before the screen becomes visible or as soon as the screen becomes hidden, uh, you can put in different functions or expressions within these properties. When you're dealing with custom forms, one of the things to keep in mind, and this will help solve a lot of the scenarios that you run into, or even when you're getting creative and have to wire up different scenarios, keep in mind that when you're bouncing between, hold on, let me go to the form real quick. So when you're bouncing between these items, right? So here, if I select this item to bring up this form, then I select this item to bring up the form. As I'm bouncing between these items in the list, there's only one, three sets of events or three events that actually get fired each and every time. All the other ones only get fired once when that list first loads. So when the list first loads, you're going to get the on screen and all this other good stuff. Uh, the on app, I don't even think these apply with custom forms. But understand that these events, only, only the events under the SharePoint integration, these three actually on save and on cancel fire each and every time. But when you're bouncing between the forms, these three, I mean, when you bounce between the list and the SharePoint list, only these three get fired each and every time, almost like clockwork, actually just like clockwork, which is, which is fantastic because they're consistent, they're predictable, and anything that you need to do, you need to drop them into these properties. So in our case, it's going to be the on new, right? So the on view is just when you're clicking between these, this is the orange view for that item. That's the orange view for that item. That's the orange view for that item. If I click edit, that's going to be the edit for that item. If I select this and click edit, it's going to be the edit for that item. And then, of course, if I come up here and correct, uh, select new, that's going to be the on new uh, for those items uh, that's fired for the SharePoint integration. Understand, these get fired each and every time as you bounce between them, and they do not require the refresh where the other on events require refreshes. So to solve this, what you have to do is go to the on new, and then here you see that we're uh, sending the new form, uh, the form main into new mode. 
Uh, we're setting a local variable saying which mode that the form is in, which we can use in, in different scenarios. And then we're navigating to that main screen, right? Because so if you look at this, uh, if I go to edit, I'm always hitting this first screen. So that's my parking screen. And this is my car screen, right? And if you look here, that's what you see here, my main screen, my parking screen, and then my car screen. So when I first go new, the first thing I do is navigate uh, to the main screen uh, after I set all these into new mode. So the key piece that's missing is the reset function. There's a reset function. So if you do a reset form, so the one that has our cascading dropdown is going to be, let me explain this out, uh, form car. So if you do a reset on form car, the one that has your cascading, now let's go ahead and save this. And it may take you several refresh cycles uh, to see the change, but we are patient, we get through it. So let's go ahead and push this up. Go over here, hit control F5, go into one of these. And, and again, the, the issue that we're trying to solve for this one particular scenario is that I have Chrysler fifth half selected here. And if I go ahead and hit new, put in my batch number, go new, select a lot. So next, I have the Chrysler fifth out. Let me do another control F5, just to make sure that we actually have a fix and we don't have to do any more touches. All right, so there's my Bentley. And if I go new, put in my batch number, select a lot, go next. Now I have Acura CL, you see that? So now I'm at Acura, now why is it Acura CL? It's Acura CL because Acura is the first item in the list, in the model, once the Acura is selected, it's the first model for that particular mate, right? So that's why we get in the first there. And that's sometimes is, is not ideal, right? So we can fix that as well. So what we want to do is force the user to make a selection and not mistakenly um, select or use the default value, even though it is the first one in the list, we actually want them to be intentional. We want to force them to make a decision, right? So in order to do that, Here's my car models. I have my makes here and I have the associated model for each make. And then I have this make option. And we talked about this in the previous video where we talk about uh, getting unique values and how that's, uh, how that's done. Because these are unique values and my first drop down is actually looking at this choice selection versus this entire list. What I can do, I can just put in an option here that says select uh, make and then do the the double dash there and save it all. And now if I come here to my equipment requests, uh, hit refresh. And if I go new, select this over, go next, select my parking lot, go next. And then here we go. Now this is, this is, this feels natural, right? So it's like, okay, you have to select something and then you force them to select it. If they try to blow past this, our, our validation kicks in, so we're forcing them to make a decision. And then after that, everything works as expected. All right, so we go ahead and hit save. And now that Austin Martin Rapid S is gonna be selected. Now, if I go into new, uh, this is the other issue, right? So if I create the item and then go new, all my values from the previous were selected except for car, interesting except for the one that I have reset form on, right? Because I don't have the reset form explicitly for my parking lot form, I, nor do I have the reset form explicitly for my main form. So let's go ahead and drop those in. So if I go here, hit back, go to forward, let me just copy this, and then let's just go add these in. And then now let's just do this to form main, and then change this one to form what is it, parking something, parking spot. All right, so once that's done, save this off. So in short, the main piece I was missing to make sure these things are working as expected, and you're getting your refreshes and things are um, coming back and displaying the value and having it going to their default state, is you're missing the reset form selection, right? So this is going to cost me a couple of refreshes. So let me just kind of go through this ceremony. Select the make. And then save. Now if I go new, what's going to happen? I still get the values. Let me do control F5. And it's interesting, right? Like it seems like that saved value um, piece only happens when after 
you're selecting new and after you created the item. So if I select it new after selecting the existing item, it seems to reset. There we go. Now we're reset. Everything seems to be default state for the form. And now even though we're doing cascading drop down, we kind of injected our own custom controls to make a cascading drop down. Everything is working as expected. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you for that question. Uh, yes, I'm sure that was probably bugging a lot of people. I know they actually kind of bugged me in the past. I just actually forgot how to do it. But now we have it documented. We have a nice video to talk through not only resetting the cascading drop down, but also resetting your form state in general. Uh, don't forget the reset form. That's going to be critical. Drop it in. You're on new. And again, this is only an issue for custom forms when you're interacting with that form bouncing between list items in the SharePoint list. If this was a Canvas app, because naturally the cycle of a Canvas app to get from one to the other, um, especially items, unless you're using a gallery within it, you, it kind of forces a refresh. So you don't kind of get that issue. We see this issue a lot when bouncing between items, uh, dealing with a custom form created in Power Apps. That's it for this video. Keep those questions coming and I'll knock them down as they come in. Thank you.